Hello, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the first episode of Inside Michigan Recruiting with Go Blue Design. I am your host, Go Blue Design. And um, before we get started, I'd like to thank all my followers on Twitter, all my subscribers to GBD Insider on my blog, GoBlueDesign.Weebly.com. Um, if you haven't subscribed to GBD Insider, I highly recommend that you go onto my website. It's right there. There's an option to subscribe. You will get access to free VIP posts that I will be posting weekly. And if you don't want to be paying for a recruiting membership on any site, this is a good option for you. I highly recommend it. So guys, this being our first episode, uh, I want to discuss our goals and plans for the show, as well as scheduling times and stuff like that. And also, of course, we're going to get to the subject at hand, Michigan recruiting. Uh, we'll be talking about the opening, um, what's going to be going on with the Ties Battle Saga, and how Michigan's going to be moving on from that in terms of basketball recruiting, and possible additions coming for the 2017 class. We're going to talk about that, but as I said first, we're going to talk about goals for the show. Um, I'm going to be trying to be posting this show weekly. We're going to be trying to make it weekly. There may be some times where I'll be stuck with doing some design work, or I'll be stuck doing something else that I won't be able to get a post in for the show. But again, I will be trying to post a weekly show for you guys to be listening. And um, yeah, I'm going to make sure that this show doesn't run too long. We're going to try to make this a short show. Just want to take 10 to 15 minutes out of your day to discuss Michigan recruiting. Don't want to be here for a long time. But just want to get you guys filled up with news and the latest happenings regarding machine recruiting. And yeah, scheduling times, yeah, uh, look for me to post either on the weekend or Monday of each week, probably posting during the afternoon. That's when everybody seems to be home after work and stuff like that, trying to find a convenient time. If you guys want a convenient time, you can tweet me at GoBlueDesign or you can contact me on my website or any other contact method listed on my website. You can email me, design at gmail.com if you have any questions or stuff like that. Okay, first subject at hand, we're going to talk about the opening now. And Michigan had two commitments at the opening, had plenty of targets at the opening. Brandon Peters, Michael Onwenu, several other targets, Rashawn Gary, performed extremely well at the opening. Brandon Peters, of course, made it into the finals of the Elite 11. Extremely proud for him. Michael Onwenu was named Final Five based on offensive lineman skills. He had a great job. Rashawn Gary, same for him. Final Five in the defensive lineman. I believe he was the MVP. Lots of 2017 prospects to keep an eye on there. Donovan Peoples-Jones out of Cast Tech in Detroit won the Nike Spark rating challenge. That's extremely impressive for a sophomore to win the award. He is a guy to keep an eye on. According to 247 Sports, uh, Michigan's in great shape to land him. And what I've been reading, what I've been hearing, is that he is considering Michigan as a top school. Look for him. I'm looking for him to stay in state right now, unless Ohio State comes in and tries to take him out of state. He's taken some recent visits to California. Not sure if that means anything. Uh, I'm assuming Michigan eventually will get an official visit, but still plenty of time until 2017 National Signing Day. Of course, Harbaugh and company will have to recruit him very hard. Five-star prospect. He's got to be a top prospect in-state, member of the Pipeline 9. And yeah, but yeah, I wanted to get to talking about Brandon Peters. He was extremely impressive in the Elite 11. From what I've read, he impressed everyone every single day. And he wasn't on the initial list coming out of day one to be in the Elite 11, but he worked his way in. And he made it to the final group, which is very, we're very proud of him as a Michigan fan base. And Brandon Peters is, you can expect him to see a bump in the ratings, as well as Michael Nwenu. He was recently bumped up to being the number one offensive guard in the country by 247 Sports. So, yeah, that's great. Rashawn Gary wanted to get to that. He performed great. Everyone perf expected him to perform well. We saw a one versus two matchup with him going up against Greg Little. Everyone wanted to see that, and in all terms of seriousness, it seemed as though he had the upper hand on Greg Little. Greg Little put up a good fight, but it seemed Rashawn Gary won those reps. Rashawn lost very few reps out of the maybe 30 or so reps that he received all, all during his time there at the opening in Oregon. And yeah, 
So very promising looks for the coming out for those prospects from the opening. Now I wanted to get to basketball. Um, as of today, Ty's battle is officially committed to the Syracuse Orange. And big blow to Michigan and John Beeline and his coaching staff was a huge get. The five-star out of New Jersey was the biggest recruiting get since Mitch McGarry, who was once rated number two in his class, then later fell down to a lower ranking, but still a huge recruit that slipped out of the hands of the Wolverine coaching staff. And now he is going to be a member of the Syracuse basketball program. Where does Michigan go here? That's a good question. Um, look for Michigan to aggressively pursue guys like Miles Bridges. Cassius Winston was always a huge target. Um, John Beeline has been out viewing many different prospects. He's been going to their AAU games. Um, look for some more offers to be handed out. We've already got two big men commits, which uh, I'm extremely happy about because I always felt that the Wolverine lineup lacked height, and these guys seem to be 6'10 or taller. And But we need a good wing player. That's that's where Ty's battle came in, where who's going to replace Karis LeVert after this coming season. That was a, That was a good get. And now... Now you need a plan B, really. So, again, expect them to really go hard to pursue Miles Bridges. Cassius Winston is still an option. Um, the loss of Ty's battle doesn't help in regards to Winston's recruit recruitment. Um, that would have been a huge get. They would have been. They would have liked to play together. Um, many believe that if Miles Bridges goes to either Michigan State or Michigan, that Winston will follow with him and play. Um, as of right now, with Bridges' recruitment, I think Kentucky holds the edge. And I would be surprised to not see him go anywhere besides Kentucky, you know. But Michigan State has done a great job recruiting him. Wouldn't be surprised if the Spartans were able to land him, from what I've heard. But Michigan, Michigan's in a good position. They just made, they just cracked the new top five, along with schools such as Kentucky, Michigan State, Indiana. Uh, Michigan's going to have to do a good job recruiting him. They'll have to pursue him aggressively. It'll be a tough process. Uh, same thing with, with Winston. He, many believe that he might be a Michigan lean at one point, but I, I personally believe he's a Michigan State lean as of now. Um, it'll be difficult to, to get him away from Izzo's hands. You know, Izzo's been on top of him. Michigan State has done a great job recruiting those guys, so I would not be surprised to see them both go to Michigan State or to see at least one go to Michigan State. But I also wouldn't be surprised to see one of them go to Michigan. That would be a solid get for Beeline and their staff to recover from this. They're, they, were on some, they were on some other guys, but some other guys committed early, some guys that we didn't expect. And yeah, that, this, will, this will be difficult to come back from, but I think Beeline, Beeline, I trust Beeline. Beeline's a great coach. He's got a great system. He's produced players that can go on to the NBA. He knows how to get you to the NBA. I mean, he's taken players that were not highly touted coming out of high school and formed them into lottery picks. And so imagine what Coach Beeline could do with a highly touted recruit that's already on his way to going into the NBA. And he can just make them better in terms of skill, in terms of being a team player. John Beeline would be a good coach. I, I like his system for a lot of players. And I, I, think, I think Michigan has a good chance of getting a, a, a highly touted player soon. So I don't think the Wolverine fan base needs to worry too much. Of course, it was a huge loss. But I think our coaching staff knows how to rebound, and I think we will rebound as a program in terms of recruiting. I think the Michigan basketball program is going to be improving this year in terms of record. Last year was uh, honestly a failure in terms of record. Karis LeVert and Derek Walton, of course, were injured throughout the season. Uh, Michigan was coming off a season where they were losing a lot of players that took them on to an elite, elite eight run, as well as the Final Four championship run. So expect the Wolverines basketball pro program to be improving these next coming seasons. The future looks bright for the Wolverines in terms of basketball. So I don't think this run of going deep into the tournament was a fluke or anything. I, I think we should expect the Wolverines to continue that run. Now in terms of 2017 prospects, of course, I've been hearing rumblings that there may be a 2017 commit coming soon. Can't really confirm anything as of now, but the Wolverines are high with a lot of top 2017 prospects. The Wolverines have offered a lot of 2017 prospects, and I, I truly expect as of now, the way things are looking, 
for the Wolverines to bring in a top 10 class for the class of 2017 easily. Could easily be a top 5, maybe even a top 3 class from the looks of it. Michigan's done a great job recruiting in-state 2017. We're in great position with everyone in-state. Uh, maybe one or two guys that are more Michigan State leans, but the Wolverines still, are still high on their list, but they may be Michigan State leans as of now. But Michigan's doing great with guys like Donovan Peoples-Jones, um, Jalen Kelly-Powell, uh, Corey Malone Hatcher. We're doing great with those guys. Um, not sure where this possible commit might be coming from as of now, but again, uh, I don't want to be really saying stuff such as, such as that to possibly ruin a commit. I uh, don't want to be bringing the news out too early, but again, you heard it here. You can expect there is a possibility of a 2017 commit coming any time now. There's a lot of guys that are, I wouldn't be surprised if they pulled the trigger soon. Things are looking good in terms of the 12, 2017 recruiting class. Um, again, there's, there's several top prospects that the Wolverines are eyeing, and that class could possibly be better than this 20, 2016 class that's already looking fantastic, and it's not even done. So, yeah, 2017 class is looking great. Um, yeah, just noting that, uh, I want to talk about the 2016 class just a little bit before we get done here. Uh, I'm not sure when we can expect the next commit. Um, expect Well, actually, uh, I take that back. We can most likely expect the, the next commit in coming August, early August. Um, there's a lot of possibilities in August. We got plenty of guys coming to visit for the barbecue. We got plenty of guys that could pull the trigger, including some 2017 prospects, but I don't really expect them to pull the trigger this soon. But you got plenty of guys. You got plenty of guys, really. Um, you, that's when I would expect the next commitment to come. You guys, you guys got like Tony Butler coming in for a visit. He's coming in, I think he's coming in two days to visit. He said he wants to make a decision sometime in August or September. I expect him to make the decision in August. Um, you can look for the coaching staff to possibly push him to make a commitment sooner than that based on spots being available. Um, but there are, there are other players, Nasir Upshur, that could he could uh, commit to the Wolverines. Uh, I believe he's announcing August 8th. Um, I expect him, as of now, to go blue. But he's taking a visit to FSU and... Um, reports were saying that FSU is running number two for him, and that that could that could be a school to keep an eye out on. That they could certainly come in at the end and pull off a pull off a great job recruiting. Even though it hasn't been going well for FSU lately with all the all these battery allegations, but yeah, you understand. Uh, also, guys like Amir Mitchell, I'm expecting them to make a decision sooner rather than later. Uh, People were saying that they're that he was going to make a decision probably more towards the later ends of the year, more towards fall. But you could expect him to make a decision before the season starts. And he's visiting Ohio State. Uh, Michigan is running number one for him as of now. Ohio State's running two. Um, maybe a school like Notre Dame is running three for him. But I still expect him to wear the maize and blue in college. But you got to watch out for schools like Ohio State. And I heard from numerous reports that um, Rashawn Gary was going to take guys like him down south to visit some schools such as Ole Miss, Auburn, Alabama, try to see what they would what 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 they would be like down there as a good as a good pairing down there. Um, yeah, you can expect a lot of commitments coming from the East Coast, of course. Um, guys like uh, Devin Bush Jr. Uh, I originally reported that there was going to be a commit around the July Fourth Independence Day. Um, and I did not say who it was, but it was Devin Bush Jr. The, that's the person I had my hunch on, and that was confirmed that he did. He was planning on committing on July 4th, but it, since then has decided to push back his announcement date to around August. Um, I still expect him to definitely announce before the season, um, and right now he's extremely high on the Wolverines, also high on FSU. And, man, this is a two-horse race as of right now. I don't see any other team that can come in and possibly steal him from one of those teams. Uh, it's really a toss-up right now. I think Michigan holds the edge, having the two other Flanagan teammates being commits. But this this could go either way. Um, he's, of course, a Florida State legacy. You could definitely see him go there. And, yeah. Well, 
I think that we're going to wrap it up. That's our first episode of Inside Michigan Recruiting with Gobu Design. As always, if you have any questions, please tweet me at Gobu Design. Um, you can contact me on my website, gobudesign.weebly.com. Please check out my blog, GBD Insider. And stay tuned for the next episode of Inside Michigan Recruiting with Gobu Design. Thanks for listening, and go blue.